Hello there and welcome back. It is another Friday for me. That means it's time for me to go to one of my favorite painting groups, the Hood Portrait Group in Frederick, Maryland. So as I said a long time ago, this painting was an ongoing or is an ongoing pose in the Hood College Portrait Group. Today is actually the last sitting uh, with our model Morgan. So I'm going to take this large painting. Hopefully there'll be enough space to work on it from life and we're going to continue to uh, push the color variation as we enter into the perceptual color pass and try to you know push more of the color relationships and maybe if we get the time close up some of the forms uh, such as in the face and maybe a little bit in the hands too. All right voiceover Yupari is back so that means that I am voicing this footage over after the fact so it's kind of like both of us are watching the footage together and I'm here guiding you along so if you would like to know exactly what colors I'm using I have all that information typed up in the description box down below along with Amazon affiliate links so if you do decide to purchase the same type of materials that I'm using from my Amazon links Amazon will pay me a small amount so thank you in advance so today we are working from life we are painting our model Morgan and what you're seeing me doing right here is oiling out the area that I'm going to be uh, subdividing the values for and that is the uh, the face I am going to oil out the shoulders and the arms a little bit later off camera so today's episode is going to be a little different um, you will notice that the picture quality is not going to be as good on the painting. I apologize for that. I had to raise the ISO on my camera, meaning I had to raise the light sensitivity because my painting was kind of in the dark in the portrait session. And this is me trying to show you uh, how I mix up the color value web here from life. So it's pretty similar to the same colors you saw me use before. I started out with the um, alizarin permanent and then the um, ivory black in the beginning and then combined the cadmium red and green with the flake white in the middle tones I'm sorry that the it's glaring a lot so you know what today's video is gonna be mostly kind of like a podcast really because I'm going to be guiding you through uh, my thought process in terms of color variation and how to push uh, differences between color spots so right here in the lighter region of the color value web I knew automatically that I would need to have some more yellowish colors uh, for that yellow spotlight that's kind of difficult to see in the corner but anyway uh, titanium white and yellow ochre is pretty much the lightest um, lightest value I will probably have on the flesh tones and now what I'm doing is I'm mixing up a cool value web right underneath of the uh, color value web for the flesh tones. Now I'm going to do the same thing with a warm value web. So these are kind of like rails. Uh, I have a cool rail and a warm rail. And I'm sorry it's kind of getting off uh, <laughs> getting off camera there. You know, it's kind of difficult to film in a, uh, you know, in a separate portrait painting group. Uh, because, yeah, anyway, nah, no excuses. Now you see a warm color value web, a flesh tone color value web, and then now a warm pinkish value web. So whenever I want to go cooler, I can go uh, cooler easily, warmer, I can go warmer easily. And then, um, you know, when I want to tint colors greenish, bluish, uh, purplish, uh, however I want to tint the hue of a certain area, I will be taking directly from uh, this more advanced color value web now. And in today's episode, we are in the perceptual color stage of this larger painting. So you won't see a photo reference of uh, Morgan to the top left corner of your screen just because I'm working from life, but you will see uh, footage of Morgan in between certain shots. And excuse my hair. <laughs> I need to get a haircut, man. Okay, so each area that I'm going to work on is going to uh, be a specific color spot and I'm going to be looking for spots of color to push the hue variation and I cannot emphasize how important it is to do this from life that's why I dragged my large painting my large studio painting over uh, to the the final session with uh, the model Morgan with Morgan uh, so there is another color spot so I will be switching brushes periodically you'll notice that I'll use the same brush for different um, or sorry for the same type of value or color 
mostly color. So I have a warmish kind of a lizard color for the upper lip. And then we have a little bit of a, a lighter pinker color above, kind of below the filtrum of the lip. So today is going to be pretty important. The information that I'm going to be giving you is going to be about how to relate color spots, especially within the flesh tone. So today's episode is going to be very, very specialized towards color spot uh, variation. Now load it, notice here, right, with the uh, the footage. I have a pretty good camera, I'd say. It's a Canon T7i, um, you know, and I set the ISO to the best setting possible. So I did do the best I could to uh, record the uh, the model. But you saw with the footage of the model that the colors were relatively flat. And that's one thing you'll notice with uh, photo references. Even, you know, even if you, you'll, you notice like, um, I don't know, a really high quality movie you know if you go and watch like um, I don't know the Avengers or something like that um, you'll notice that the even the highest quality cameras will flatten out to some extent the color and the values depending on you know how the person edits the footage and eh, this is a painting <laughs> this is a painting uh, video not so much uh, about film but anyway um, each spot okay now even the side plane of the nose is a different spot and um, I oiled out the painting especially with the face because I want my spots of color to be uh, semi-transparent so right then and there I was pushing the side plane of the bulb of the nose a little bit more in the lavender kind of coolish pink as opposed to the warmish pink spot of color for the upper lip. I am relating one spot of color to another spot of color, okay? So this is how I'm going to go about pushing the color spots in relation to one another. Now, the um, the sclera I actually saw a little bit lighter today. So, oh, excuse me, so I'm pushing it a little bit lighter and cooler. Notice how flat the image is from the camera. Okay, so returning to here, uh, pushing the value a little bit, and it's still not titanium white. You know, it's still not the brightest light. And as you'll notice, even as I'm pushing these spots of color, I'm not really staying too close. And that right there is, was a kind of a yellow ochre, excuse me, yellow ochre-ish kind of spot. There you go. And I'm also pushing the value a little bit lighter like I said, today is mostly kind of like a podcast. So now the spot of color on the forehead. Uh, so imagine each little spot of color now. We are relating these colors in terms of their temperatures and the hues. Okay, so two factors, the temperature and the hue. So temperature being is it warmer, is it cooler? And then hue being is it, you know, is it more pink? Or is it more like a, um, you know, like a, orangey pink those two colors are still warm but the hue changes okay so the hue now changes between the forehead and the top plane of the chin the top plane of the chin is warmer than say the side plane of the lip it's very similar to the forehead and in fact the photograph flattens it out but the chin i actually painted it a little bit uh, closer to the, I'd say, Naples yellow, kind of a less bright yellow in relation to the forehead. Now, the neck is even warmer. That spot right there is even warmer than the spot of color on the forehead. And I think it's the most yellow. And directly beneath it, right around here, we're going to uh, be receiving some warmer tones. So again, the perceptual color pass is meant to add on color variation and much more specific color. So now we're moving on to the big picture. So now we're gonna move on to the larger shapes. As you'll notice with the hair, we put a little bit of a cooler note on the side of the hair and note just means it's just another word for spot that's just how I'm using it so I put a different 
kind of greenish tint to the lighter planes of the hair. Now the background color has been painted in. Uh, it's a little bit closer to the um, bluer side of the red spectrum. So it does have a little bit of a pinkish tint to it. And now we put in a little bit of a, uh, a half tone in between the dark fabric and the red fabric. And I used a little bit of the, uh, or a lot, of the alizarin crimson and the ultramarine blue ultramarine blue to get that color even okay in the in the um the model behind her you can actually see uh, there's some color variation even in the video so you can st see that deeper red has more of a uh, cool tint to it than the you know lighter pink in the background and that's the same kind of color relationship that we painted on the painting and now we're working a different spot of color for the uh, the fabric that the model is resting her hand on now i will admit that the photo reference sorry the photo reference the video uh, flattens it out way too much so there was much more of a cooler greenish light but not quite as green as the green of the vase you know this is almost kind of like a like poetry right it's as green almost as green as the vase but it's a little bit bluer and then the vase is much bluer than um, you know the dark blues of the clothing it's very poetic in nature everything's connected everything's related that's how we can push the specificity and the you know the nuance to the color and now this little light plane though you can't really see it in the footage this light plane that i'm painting on the uh, drapery that the model is wearing is cooler than the flesh tones just like the fabric that the model's hand is resting on but it's closer to the yellow side it's closer to the yellow side therefore it's a little bit warmer so now you can see the dialogue between all of the spots of color and this is how you will continue to refine and hone in your color shapes. Once we have all of these colors mapped out and uh, you know the perceptual color stage is finished, the very last thing to do is apply a selective render, meaning once we already have an understanding of the large uh, color relationships and the large forms and the large values, all that will be left after this stage is to selectively render certain areas such as the face we would want the face to be more realistic we would want the hands to be more realistic so um another another thing you'll notice is that the model's hands are in different position in a different position now that's that's not the fault of the model that's because when i was working from the photo reference the pose was a little bit different but it's okay um now i'm relating actually the light on the forearm on the model's left hand to the forearm on the model's right hand and yes two shapes that should be the exact same in theory can have different color variations so the hand closer to the right side of the canvas in nature i'm observing it i observed it to be a little bit pinker a little bit more orangey pink and a little bit more orangey pink neutral for the forearm to the left of the canvas. And now we're painting in some more bright light there for the, um, the lighter facing planes on, the, um, on the, the bicep and on the side for the uh, pectoral muscle. Now even the individual transitions between the forms can have color variations and color relationships so i'm going to slow down as i explain this part because it can be a little difficult to understand so the transition just means the uh, the change in value between one shape and another shape to describe form so as you see i just pushed the value on the back side of our model's arm and that is because there is a separate light behind her and that is the daylight uh, from the windows directly behind her so i pushed it greener in relation to the halftone that you just saw me paint in 
which the half tone is more of a kind of lavender, uh, you know, neutral orangey type color in relation to the, you know, more yellowish orangey colors in the, um, right here, underneath of the neck, around the clavicle. So each individual plane change within the form can now have different color relationships. And that's why I'm saying that today's episode is more of like a podcast. It's it's more of listen to me speaking to you so that I can narrate the experience of what it's like to relate shapes of color to one another so that when you are painting on your own, you can incorporate the same kind of dialogue within yourself. You know, is this shape of the apple pinker or redder than, um, or more red than, say, the red of a fabric? Or, you know, is the sky actually more in the greenish color than the kind of lavender blue colors maybe in a lake that you're painting, if you're painting a landscape? I want you to incorporate this kind of dialogue within your own work so that you can then push more color uh, variation within your own paintings. And now I do suggest to push the color variations after you have already established a foundational uh, color stage. That's why the stage before this one I, uh, I titled the local color stage. Remember, I'm using a technique now that I'm doing some formal writing on, which I'm going to call Yupari's Classical Technique. I even have a playlist now on my YouTube channel featuring um, each stage of the classical technique. So now what we're doing is we're taking that classical technique and we're creating paintings using that technique. So now I actually saw a little bit more of a neutral warm color beneath the shoulder. So these color variations are very, very difficult to see, okay? So looking at it at first glance, most of us will see what we see in a photograph. Most of us will see from nature what we are trained to see. You know, we're trained to see movies. We're trained to see, uh, you know, cinematic shots with maybe a sepia filter or something like that. But most of us aren't really trained to look for variation within color shapes from nature. And this is what I want to press on to you, that you can see these color variations by relating specific spots to one another. And again, I do want to sell um, you know, self-teaching kits and information along with the, uh, the books that I want to write on technique, because I do know that this is a fairly difficult uh, these are fairly difficult concepts to grasp, I admit. Especially for me, when I was just getting into, you know, these the, the idea of relating colors, I would tell myself, like, I know that I know that there should be more, you know, of a nuanced color to a specific area, like the hands or something. But in the past, I just couldn't see it. And it takes a certain amount of training. And, uh, and in a way, we're kind of learning how to see all over again when we study colors in this way. And now what I'm doing is I'm applying a pinker shade to the hands. I did see that the side plane, side plane of the hand, you know, the one that's receiving the daylight, was much greener, in fact, than um, even the side plane, uh, you know, next to the shoulder that's receiving that reflected light. And then in contrast to that, uh, the fingers, the phalanges are much warmer, much pinker. All right, so now we're going to be entering into the final pose from life. So I did change the camera settings so that you can see uh, the model a little better, but I think all it did was make the footage a little darker. Uh, so I apologize about that. But now that this is pretty much the last minute in the pose from life. So this is something else, another bit of information that I want to, to give to you. In the last pose, especially when you're working from life, especially like the last minute or the last two minutes, don't work on anything within the face or anything uh, like that. Work on the hair, okay? 
I'm sorry, everyone's walking in front of my camera, but that's okay. Work on the hair. With the last pose, just focus on the hair or something like that. I'm sorry everyone's rock walking in front of my camera. But anyway, that's pretty much everything I wanted to say about relating these large areas of color. So once this layer dries, I will be able to enter into the final stage uh, of what I'm calling Yupari's classical technique. The final stage will be the selective render. So after this layer dries, I will be able to go in with an even more uh, transparent application of color and be able to render certain areas with much more specificity. That being said, always remember, in a world that can be so negative, and I mean so negative, be the spark that ignites positivity amongst all of us. I really do hope that you have a wonderful day, and I'll see you tomorrow.